So earlier this year, Inside Out 2, according to Pixar employees, was a make or break theatrical release for Pixar. If that, if that movie didn't end up becoming a runaway success like it did, making 1.6 billion worldwide, they were worried Pixar would actually be shut down. And since the success of Inside Out 2, IGN recently published a huge report on the inner workings of Pixar and the decisions that they're making about the content for kids. And it revealed that Disney leadership actually blames the colossal flop of Lightyear on a split second same sex kiss between two side characters that became a point of controversy at the time. I mean, I don't think that that's what killed that movie. I don't think it helped, but I don't think it killed that movie. Uh, in this IG, I don't report, think normal. I don't think normal people knew that was going to happen in the film. Therefore, they didn't care. They yeah. just didn't go to the movie because they're like, right. why? Um, why is uh, why is Tim Allen not in this? And like, why is it right. not about the toy? Yeah. It's about Lightyear, the person. Yeah. Like, it was too confusing and too convoluted. Um, but yeah, this says there are many at Pixar who feel like they rushed to give that big give Pixar the hit it n desperately needed and were hung out to dry. One person said, I would venture at least 95% of the people that got laid off after the movie are financially effed right now. Outside of the financial strain, sources also paint a picture of a studio that is terrified to rock the boat, with some internally pushing to avoid LGBTQ themes mm -hmm. requiring edits to Inside Out 2. It's a studio that's overly reliant on Chief Creative Officer Pete Docter, stubbornly set in its ways and setting its remaining team up for more crunch in its future films. Quote, the internal culture of Pixar, Pixar right now is really rough. There is an incredible amount of people who are like, I can't do this anymore. Disney declined to comment further on the story. Um, but particularly after Lightyear's financial failure, Sources say that Pixar lost the desire to take risks, either in its creative appointments or story decisions. There were many reasons why Lightyear disappointed at the box office, but Pete, uh, I guess this guy, the chief creative officer, Pete Docter, um, he said that he, he prompted a lot of soul searching at the studio which basically means it was uh, a wake up call for mm -hmm. them, that they kind of jumped the shark when it comes to yeah. messaging in their films. Right. But multiple sources say that Disney leadership internally put a large part of blame for Lightyear's failure on a same-sex kiss in the film, which was briefly removed, then reinstated after internal staff uproar. In a joint statement, LGBTQ workers and allies at Pixar said leadership was censoring overtly gay affection at a time where employees were protesting the company's response to Florida's don't say gay bill. Mm -hmm. One said, it is as far as I know, still a thing where leadership bring up Lightyear specifically and say, oh, Lightyear was a financial failure because it had a queer kiss in it. That's not the reason the movie failed. But Pete Docter largely uses the language of making, quote, universal stories, which means something that's very homogenous that everyone can relate to. The apparent hesitance to touch LGBTQ themes and storylines in particular affected Inside Out 2's development. Multiple people recall hearing about continuous notes to make Riley, the main character, come across as, quote, <laughs> less gay, <laughs> leading to numerous edits. And the resolution, this was after the resolution of the writer's strike. Sources describe rumors that there was a special care put into making the relationship between Riley and Val, a supporting character, seem as platonic as possible, even requiring edits to the lighting and tone of certain scenes to remove any trace of romantic chemistry. One source describes it as doing a lot of extra work to make sure that no one would potentially see them as not straight. It's really funny because I was talking um, the other night when watching Agatha and um, Olivia's like, I don't see the gay undertones that you're talking about. Right. When um, Rio and Agatha are fighting, I'm like, no, no, you're, no, it's it's there. Trust me. Like, you, if you know how Hollywood works, if you know how camera shots work, it's absolutely there. And then it's more blatant. She gets it after the fact because there's dialogue that heavily hints 
at that. Right. But right. you can tell in the way the fights are shot and the way that they handle the banter and the dialogue beforehand that that is the undertone there. And I find the most interesting part to that that lighting changes. Like, don't ever for a second think that there's anything that ever comes across on screen in a movie that is not 110% yep. supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. the, the level of committee that needs to be had just to get a Hollywood movie made nowadays, it passes through so many hands that nothing just goes, oh, shucks, how did that end up there? That's not a thing. So did you take your kids to see either of these? No, I did not. I did not. Um, especially, I, I definitely didn't the light year one because I saw that they were trying to do this, this woke thing with the Toy Story characters. In fact, uh, in, in the Geeks and Gamers article, it says... Um, or a tweet, it says, a lot of us accepted the fact that we may never see a gay, major gay character in a Pixar movie. I'm like, okay, that's not a bad thing. I'm glad you came to accept that. And you went through all the stages of grief and then you accepted finally that there's right. not going to be a gay character in a Pixar accepting movie. It. No, we're, now we're all on the same page. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I still think that to fail as spectacularly as it did, which is like it made only like $100 million total or something like that, that does not happen for just one reason. There's also the confusion over who this character is. Why is mm -hmm. it not Tim Allen? Where yeah. is where right. is Woody? Where are all the other characters that we love about this? That plays a huge role in what prevents you know families and people from going. It may have played a role, but I don't buy that a country that is as liberal leaning as a lot of you know the big cities are. Why wouldn't they have gone out at the very least? You know, maybe they don't show up in middle America, but Los Angeles doesn't show up yeah. to see this movie. It wasn't just the San Francisco characters. doesn't show up to see this movie. They don't have kids. Yeah. The, oh, that's a that's a good point. That, yeah, but they're perpetually adults. But they're perpetually adults anyway. They're perpetually <laughs> kids anyways who go to Disney. Yeah, but a lot of the a lot of the characters were also sort of woke and like they're picking. It's almost like I know it's a cartoon, but let's like DEI up as, as many yeah. characters as possible. Well, I mean, you're obviously more aware of a lot of these culture culture war issues than most parents or most people in general would be. So we would venture to guess that you're actually in the minority when it comes to your decision not to bring your kids to see Lightyear. Sure. I think the majority of parents just either didn't hear about it because no one liked it or, you know, they maybe went to see it and were disappointed. That's like a totally different, that's a totally separate issue from the, the same sex kiss, which should not have been in there. Like they shouldn't have done that. That was a big mistake. Do Does the average parent just trying to bring their kids to see a movie know Disney's stance on don't no. say gay and allowing that? And that it's gained to stop a lot them, more awareness, not. a lot more traction yeah. since 2022, yeah. obviously, but still, it's not something that, you know, mainstream. Yeah normie parents right. are really paying attention somebody to. else also said like they didn't know who this movie was supposed to appeal to is it supposed to appeal to the adults who grew up with buzz lightyear or kids okay because uh i guess the whole point would be the adults like buzz lightyear so they're gonna bring their kids to see this yeah. movie the problem is it's not the buzz lightyear that they know right Exactly. In spite of the and, characterization, and then, I mean, it could have it could have worked though. Like it could have worked from a storytelling point of view. Like, oh, you're gonna tell the story about the character that is Buzz Lightyear, yeah. right? And it could have worked where they bring their kids to watch it. But it like the trailers, the marketing, everything was so uncompelling. It didn't have Tim Allen's voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. Right. Like Do the you voice think it sounded was because so different. Of his political leanings that they decided to part ways with him. I mean, or? it was, it was right they, around, they haven't. They're bringing him back for the new one. Yeah, but it was right around the time where he, he was also let go, uh, or his show was canceled, mm -hmm. The Last Man Standing, mm -hmm. before Fox picked it up for another two seasons. I mean, that was uh, a couple of years before this, right? Was no, this it was around that time. 2022. Yeah, so around the time he would have been. He's got a new show out coming out now from Disney. I as can't well. wait. But yeah. around the time he would have been doing the voice acting for that, ABC had just canceled his show. Mm -hmm. So, and ABC is owned by Disney. Mm -hmm. I think it's very telling. There must have been something going on behind the scenes between him and Disney yeah. at, at that time because his show got canceled and he wasn't the voice. Right. Where, and at the time that it was canceled, he would have been doing the voice acting for that movie. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I think that they wouldn't have cast him in the next Toy Story movie had Lightyear not been as big of a failure as it was because it reeks of desperation making that move. Yeah, they but, wanted to part ways with him. They realized that they couldn't. But I think they're producing his new TV show too. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's the point is they're trying yeah. to make some kind of course correction. I think here. he just won after <laughs> I think he won after the fight. being yeah. humiliated. Yeah, Tim Allen plot uh, another return. He has another return to ABC with his new show Shifting Gears. They came crawling back to him. Yeah, they came crawling back. Imagine, the way that they should have with Johnny imagine Depp. the power too. he felt after that. Right. And then despite their best efforts to make Riley in Inside Out 2 less gay, all of the conversation oh I saw God. about this movie before it came out was about Riley being gay. And it's so I mean, creepy. It was really it's creepy. It's so creepy. Like, she wanted to sniff her panties. Like, what? They were like, oh, the, the new about? emotion that they're unveiling in Inside Out 2 is lesbianism. Like, oh, that it's was so weird. The like, whole social media child. conversation, uh, like, all of the tweets that I saw about Inside Out 2 prior to release was all about speculation that this 13 year old, your 12, 13 year old character is gay. And it, it seems it's like gross. they just, they tried to like turn down the gay and it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Leave the kids alone. They yep. simply can't Stop do it. it. Yep. They can't manage it. But they said, uh, one another, another anonymous source at Pixar said, mind you, Riley is not canonically gay. In the film, what you saw, nothing about Riley says that she is gay, but it's inferred based on certain context. And so that is something they've tried to play down at multiple points. Some leadership is uncomfortable with queer themes at large, and the insistence on keeping those themes out of Inside Out 2 was a big thing throughout development. Well, universal storytelling, which is really funny because they get really mad when you use that term, universal storytelling. Right. Um, but the idea is, is that you're not supposed to market to 5%. You're supposed to market to 80%. You, you can't expect things like uh, if you make Agatha, sure, you can dump it on streaming and maybe it, uh, it finds a way to justify its existence. I doubt it. But at least it kind of makes sense that you're dumping it onto a streaming service where you're just trying to diversify your portfolio unless you end up going the Willow route where it's so bad it has to get pulled off of the, off of the service. You don't that was take unfortunate because I never watched the last episode before I got pulled. You don't, you don't take that same risk when you put it in theaters. No, you're right. Yeah. Uh, the people at the top, th yeah. this is like there might be and they're anti queer themes because, like you said, queer is five percent of the population. The other eighty, you know, ninety percent of people going to watch it, they would rather not be preached at about gay themes every time they go to the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, but there are there's a significant portion of people who want to pat themselves on the back for supporting that type of thing supporting that message didn't bros make like 300 bucks in theaters probably something like that but again like, i was surprised that movie got a theater release anyway I mean, that type of that type of movie not even that part of it but just that type of movie was at that time way more likely to go streaming anyway yeah. the, the main the guy that created it was like um it's because of everyone so uh uh homophobic no one watched the movie i'm like dude your own people didn't watch the movie that's the problem right like yeah. you have to if you're if uh, not even the gays wanted this, to see it's it. got nothing and it's not just that right it's like when they say the men didn't come out to watch this movie about a strong independent woman right well neither did the women neither the women the women didn't come out either yeah. yeah. So <laughs> again, I, which is why I, Come out, I no pun intended. I, it leads me back to the idea that I think confusion around the character played just as big of a role in all of this, and the fact that yeah. Disney was just at the time. All, it also doesn't take in the fact that Disney wasn't exactly batting a thousand. Right now, they've got Inside Out two. Right. They've got Deadpool and Wolverine. Both have done huge numbers for them at the box office. Right. But when your Little Mermaid movie only makes. $500 million at the box office and it's based off one of your most famous characters, you've lost a lot of trust from the public. Again, miscasting though, right? So you miscast, you don't cast Tim Allen and his and his iconic voice for that iconic role. Yep. And in Little Mermaid, they they cast someone who doesn't look like Little Mermaid. Yep. Simple as. It's simple as. This is not a woke thing. It's somewhat like parents are like... Yeah, it's also like... What is this? Another sign that these people are just insane and irresponsible is how does it take you nearly a decade to make a sequel to your most successful Pixar movie in years? Like the first Inside Out came out in 2015 and it oh, took wow. them Eight until years. this yeah. year for, for the second one to come out. I'm not like a huge fan of everything being a sequel or a spinoff anyway, but why would it take you that long? Right. Yep. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.